bear with me for just a moment here. Let's do this. Ah, there you go, John. Hey. I'm here. Right. All right. There's one thing I forgot to bring up. So I need to do that real quickly, and then we'll start the uh, the sharing. Uh, John, do you want to share anything with the good people before we get started? Sure. Uh, I'd like to welcome everybody to our Sunday evening service. I want to acknowledge each of you for scheduling some time here tonight. <clears throat> you know, this is an exciting time to be alive. And although our nation is in disarray with the power of division, and you might think that this could possibly be the worst time to be alive, you know, my words to you are, for this day you were made, for this day you were born. Even amidst the difficulties that we may have, it's a time spoken of by all the prophets. And it's a day when many of them would like to have lived. <clears throat> So we can choose to focus on the dark and gloomy things of life or choose to focus on the positive. And either way, life returns our thoughts and our feelings and actions multiplied. It's called the law of the harvest. And if we want happiness and goodness to be our fruits, then these are the seeds we need to sow. You know, our life, our purpose in life is to serve. Jesus was the prime example. He said, if you were not prepared to lay down your life for your brother, you're not prepared to follow me. To die is easier than to lay down your life. To lay down your life does not mean to die. Jesus did not ask us to die for him. He asked us, <clears throat> excuse me, to lay down our lives, to be of service, to give of ourselves, not to ourselves, but to others. So let's unite our hearts together and pray <clears throat> that the glory of this nation will be redeemed, that God will raise up spiritual men and spiritual women, Davids of this hour, Esthers of this hour, that God may raise up men and women who are prepared to lay down their lives for the kingdom of God. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let us now ask for what God promised to us as a nation what he promised to us as a people, even when he was on the cross, Jesus remembered the promise that he would one day raise up a nation that would send his name throughout the earth to the four corners of the earth. That nation is under attack now. That nation is looked upon by the rest of the world as being a weak nation. The United States of America must come back to its roots and realize that only God can bring it back to the place of great power and influence again. O oh Lord, will you restore back to us your presence? Would you once again look upon the hearts of men and women that are upright, that are praying and calling for you, and give us back our honor and our dignity that you placed within our hearts, your people? And bless our efforts as we endeavor to unify mankind and to grow your kingdom in every nation of the earth. Together, let us step forward with courage and conviction, carrying the torch of freedom and the light of truth, lighting the way for the world to follow. For in our hearts, we know that when we dream together, when we work together, and when we believe together, there is no limit to the greatness we can achieve. And once again, we declare glory to you and to your beautiful name and your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. 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 Now, I would like to thank you, Professor, for working in incessantly to make Billion Dollar Church a reality. I, for one, appreciate your wisdom and insights into both the spiritual and financial worlds. I've learned a lot from you, as I'm sure many others have as well. And I have no doubt that God called you to be here at such a time as this. I certainly could not have done this alone. And I thank God and I thank you for being here. And with that, I give the time to you, Professor, to share yeah. some of your wisdom with us tonight. Well, I'm, I'm really honored by that. Um, thanks so much, John. That really means a lot to me. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Billion Dollar Church. For those of you who are visiting with us, uh, welcome. We are a virtual church. 
Um, we're not here to take the place of if you happen to be a part of a faith-based organization, a church or a synagogue or what have you. We're not here to take the place of that. Okay. Um, we do teach spiritual laws. So even if you are part of a faith-based organization, not part of a faith-based organization, perhaps you don't even consider yourself right now a person of faith. That's okay. We teach spiritual laws that govern a life of abundance, radiant health, and incredible relationships. Things like the law of love, uh, the laws of faith, the laws of the harvest, the laws of unity. You're going to hear that intertwined in virtually every sharing that we do. Uh, we'll be uh, hitting on one or more of those laws. Laws, spiritual laws are eternal truths. These are principles. It doesn't matter who you are, where you come from. If you apply these principles in time, you're going to get the results um, that the principles, the the truths, the promises uh, give us. And so that's what we're doing on these uh, Sunday nights. We started last week on a series of abundance. We're going to continue on that series. We may be on this series for several weeks. Um, and I want to do a, a quick review and then get into some uh, some new sharing. And then at the end, we're going to have an optional uh, session for you to stick around. And John, who you just heard uh, from, is going to lead us in uh, a group meditation. Um, you'll come to find that meditation from a scriptural standpoint, from a, um, uh, uh, from a medical standpoint, there's a lot of uh, folks in the medical uh, uh, arena now starting to point towards uh, meditation as a way that people um, can begin to heal themselves. And so we're going to do a group um, meditation at the end, uh, should you decide to stick around for that. That'll be optional. All right. So now the first thing I want to do is I want to go and we do go into the scriptures. Now, you know, I'm very aware that um, a lot of you are not, uh, neither am I, are, are Bible scholars or anything like that. I'm also aware that we will attract people from all across the globe, uh, as well as folks that uh, maybe they're used to reading the Bible or they're not used to reading the Bible. We're not here to uh, uh, start talking about doctrines, do's and don'ts or anything like that. We're here to simply extract from the scriptures uh, principles, eternal truths that we can apply to our lives to bring about um, uh, personal transformation, positive personal transformation in areas that are important to all of us. So last week we started with John 10 and 10. There is a website I like to use when I'm doing my scriptural study called BibleGateway.com. What I like about Bible Gateway is it gives you a lot of different versions. Now, I grew up in my um, um, childhood growing to, going to church a lot, <laughs> and they use the King James Version. So I'm, I'm used to the these and thous and thus and souls and all the old English. Uh, so I do like to start with that, but I also like to look at other versions that are more updated in uh, a more uh, modern language. And what we looked at last week was this scripture here in John 10 and 10 uh, from the King James Version. Now, this was Jesus talking, okay? Jesus was saying, the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. So what Jesus is saying as the representative, uh, uh, you know, God's representative on earth, Jesus, the son of God, uh, he's saying, I came that we may have abundant life, that we may have abundant life, that we might have life and have it more abundantly. We looked at a couple of other uh, uh, versions. We looked at this version here, um, which was the New Living Translation. And we were looking at the end because the first part pretty much was the same. The thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. My purpose, Jesus is saying, is to give them a rich and satisfying life. And I want to go back real quickly to another version here. One of my favorites. This is the Amplified Version. It says, the thief comes only in order to steal, kill, and destroy. I am come that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. I like Amplified Version because it, it, it gives you a little more understanding, a little more um, um, explanation, okay? All right, so... When I used to hear this scripture, and I've heard the scripture a lot, 
Um, I'm 54, so I, you know, I've I've been in the in, in, in the Christian environment for all my life. Um, I always thought that this thief initially was the bad guy. I don't like talking much about the bad guy and don't want to give the bad guy power. Uh, but the bad guy, the 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 Satan dude, the devil dude. Okay. More and more as I'm evolving in my own uh, spiritual growth and walk, I'm starting to understand that the thief that can come to steal, kill, and destroy very often resides in me, in my thought life. As a man thinks, so is he. As a woman thinks, so is she. As we think, so are we. Okay. Um, and so anything that goes against abundance, having a fruitful relationships, uh, uh, having a great health, uh, my finances being in order, anything that goes against that is a thief. So sometimes we've got to be very careful, not sometimes, what I have to be, let me, let me talk in the eye because you're big boys and big girls, so I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm very careful now at what I watch, what I listen to, who I'm around, because even though certain people may love me, they may not be speaking good things into my life. They might be speaking doubt. They might be speaking uh, limitation. And so sometimes I have to love people from afar. So anything that goes against Abundance, health, fruitful relationships is a thief. Okay. It doesn't mean, you know, yesterday I was with a lot of family. We, um, uh, my first cousin, you know, transitioned. Um, and so I saw a whole lot of my family. I know some of the family that you know, I'm not going to spend a lot of time with. Now, did I spend time with them yesterday? Yes. But I also know some that I won't spend as much time with because. They've got a lot of limiting beliefs. I love them, but sometimes you have to love people from afar. Now, what Jesus wants, what God wants, is us to have abundance to the full till it overflows. Real quickly, we also looked at 3 John 1 and 2. It says, uh, Beloved, I wish above all things. I wish above all things. That's a lot. I wish above all things. Thou mayest prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. And then we looked, we ended last week with this scripture. I love this one. Uh, Jeremiah, so this is in the Old Testament, and I did the New Living Translation on this one. One of my favorite translations, reads more like a book. All right. Uh, and this is God speaking to his prophet Jeremiah to get this uh, uh, message out to the people. Okay. Um, so this is God saying this. For I know, God is saying, for I know the plans I have for you. I know the plans I have for you, Jim Burrow. I know the plans I have for you, Jeff. I know the plans I have for you, Dr. K and Heather. What are they? They are plans for good and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. Now, the reason these verses were, were shared on last week is they're setting a foundation. Now, I know we come from all different backgrounds. Some of you come from uh, uh, a faith-based background. Some of you do not. Some of you come from a Christian faith background. Some of you do not, okay? Growing up, um, I grew up in a very loving uh, faith-based community, but it was extremely, extremely, there was a lot of emphasis on Boy, if you don't get stuff right, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. You're going you're gonna to be in time out forever and ever and ever. There was a lot of health-centric sharing, a lot of health-centric teaching in my growing up. And I've come to know in my adult life that that was very, very traumatic for me. So I didn't grow up with a concept or a view of a loving, caring, forgiving, benevolent, cheerleading, wanting me to win God. I grew up, some of you may be able to identify with this, some of you may not, that's okay, okay? I grew up with a concept of a God that you better not tick him off. You better not make him mad. Because if you do, 
There's this place, there's this oven, and you could be there forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. So I was afraid of God. I was afraid. Now, I did all the rituals and all the routines that my church taught me to do because I was afraid. And so it wasn't until I became uh, I became an adult and started uh, reading for myself and developed a relationship. So I don't want a religion ship with God. I had that, didn't like that. I didn't like the religion God. I want a relationship. And in my relationship with the most loving, caring, powerful force in the universe, this is how I see my God, as a God that says, look, my plans for you my plans for you, DK and Christina, I'm looking over my other computers so I can acknowledge some of you that are on here, and Ron and Ronnie and Lyndon and uh, Kent, God is saying, my plans for you are good to give you a future and a hope. Okay, so that's review. Now let's go to a parable. And for those of you that, uh, again, may not, uh, um, be a person that has come from a, a Christian background. Let, let me kind of set the stage for you, okay? So what a parable is, Jesus often spoke in parables. Um, when I was in uh, elementary school, we used to have something that they call Aesop's Fables. And Aesop's Fable uh, wasn't a true story. It didn't actually literally happen, but it was a story that you could extract certain lessons of life or principles or eternal truths. So Jesus often spoke in parables, all right? So let's go to one parable he spoke uh, uh, in, and it's going to give us some, some major keys, and we may wind up coming back to this story multiple times in this series, okay? Um, now, I'm going to start off with Matthew 25. I'm going to read verses 14 through 29 in King James. So you're going to hear some of the, the old English. Then I'm going to come back and read it in the amplified version. And then we're going to start uh, taking it apart so that we can extract some truths, some principles to our lives so that we can all live a more abundant life. Okay. All right. So it says this, for the kingdom of heaven is as a man... You know what? Give me a moment. I'm missing my drawing tool. Bear with me. Let me let me grab that real quickly. Bear with me, please. This will make it easier for you to follow me. All right. So I'm right here, verse 14. All right. So the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his servants and delivered unto them his goods. And to one, he gave five talents. Now, if you just read that in the King James, you might think, oh, he gave someone five talents. Um, uh, you know, maybe he gave this one a talent in uh, of music or a talent in, um, uh, in the art. But what we'll find as we read in, in a couple of other uh, versions is that a talent represented a uh, a unit of currency, okay? All right? So, and we'll see that in just a few moments. And unto one, he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability or his capacity, okay? To everyone according to his several ability and straightway took his journey. Now, let's stop here for just a moment. And... The beautiful thing about Google is you can um, you don't have to, you know, be a Bible scholar. OK, you can go to Google for a lot of things and it will bring up a lot of uh, additional information, commentary about what you may be reading about. So we did that. And actually, I think I went to Bing here and I wanted to look up what what a talent was. Now, I know that a talent here was was referring to currency. So basically, this dude calls his employees, all right, and uh, says, hey, I've got some money. You know, I'm going away. I'm going to be gone for a while. I want you to be productive uh, with my money, okay? Now, as a unit of currency, a talent was worth 
6,000 denarii. A denarius was a usual payment for a day's labor. Now, this is referencing this parable of Matthew 25, 14 through, 30, uh, 14 through 29. At one denarius per day, so that was the that was the typical day's wage in that time. One denarius a day, a single talent was therefore worth 20 years of labor. Now, I want that to sink in. So, one denarius is what the average pay was for a day's labor. One talent was 6,000 denarii. So, one talent that was given, there was one dude that got five, another person got two, another person got one. Even the person that got one got 20 years worth of wages in that one time, all right? And then there was a direction. So now, let's arm with that. Let's go read this real quickly in King James. So unto one he gave five talents, a hundred years worth of labor, a hundred years worth of income, okay, based on that time, okay? To another he gave two, 40 years. To another one, uh, he gave one. So even the one has 20 years worth of wages to every man according to his several ability and straightway took his journey. He that had received the five talents, the 100 years worth of wages, went and traded with the same. So he was productive and made them other five talents. He doubled. He doubled. Likewise, he that received two he also gained other two. So the dude with two also got two, double, okay? Now, it's very interesting. What does the scripture say? They went and traded with the same. In other words, they didn't just sit back on their laurels. No, one of the things John teaches a lot about faith. One thing I want to make sure that we're getting is that faith doesn't mean that we just sit back. Yes, we can meditate. We're going to do that tonight. That's part of uh, uh, the, the, the pillars of faith, the meditation so that we can take our thoughts and, and feel what we want to accomplish, who we want to be, what we want to obtain. Okay? So we're feeling that. We're feeling that as a man thinks not in his mind, but in his heart, so is he. So meditation is a way to start getting those thoughts of who we want to be, what we want to become, how we want to bless other people from our head space to our heart space. But we also have to remember there's another scripture that says faith without works is dead. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. So the dude with five went and did something. Now, in our world, perhaps that would have meant that uh, he engaged in something business-wise or something maybe he was trading in the cryptocurrency market in our world, all right, or in the foreign exchange market or the stock market. Maybe he went to some workshops some seminars to learn how to do all of this. So when it says he went and traded with the same, I'm taking a couple things from that. I'm taking that he took what he had and he went and he multiplied it. I'm also taking that perhaps he got around other people. There's um in Proverbs, uh, I forget exactly where it is, but it says uh, that there is safety in a multitude of counsel, counselors, mentors. So he went and traded with the same. He didn't just meditate. Meditating is great. It's a big part of, of, of faith, but he got to work. He did something with it. Okay. He made five other talents. The other one made two. All right. Now let's look at the one who had the one, but he that had received one went and dig in the earth and hid the Lord's money. He put it in the earth. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. I tell you what, I'm going to now switch over to the Amplified Version 
where we don't get all the if. <laughs> oh. All right. All right. So we're now. All right. So now we go down to verse 19. Now, after a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. And the one who had received the five talents came and brought him five more. All right. So he doubled. Saying, Master, you entrusted to me five talents. See, I have made a profit and gained five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful and trustworthy over a little. I don't know if that was a little, if it was a uh, hundred years worth of wages, but to the you know, employer, you know, may, maybe in today's world he would have been a billionaire. So to him, that might not have been much. Okay. I will put you in charge of many things. Oh, we're going to be able to come back to that. It was after he showed that he was willing to do the work, put some works with his faith, because faith without works is dead, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Then, then the master dude said, hey, I'm going to put you in charge of even more. You've proven yourself. I'm going to give you even more. You'll hear John talk about his uh, passion and one of the projects that he's been working on for the last 10 years um, has been uh, helping to support uh, some orphanages in uh, Uganda. And you'll hear him say, you don't wait until you have the resources um, fully to start um, you know, going to work. Now, what I believe will happen, because that's been his heart, is to expand what he can do uh, with those orphanages. I believe that the Heavenly Father will bless him supernaturally. Now, can people who are not people of faith do very, 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 very well financially? Yes, they can. But they are doing it a lot on their own. What we want to be is, yes, we want to use our ability. We want to, you know, uh, do the work, all right, that lines up with our faith. But boy, it would be nice if the God of the universe would favor us, put his hands on what we're doing, because that would give us more grace. That would make it even easier for us. Well done, a good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over uh faithful and trustworthy over little, I will put you in charge of many things. Share in the joy of your master. Also, the one who had two talents came forward saying, Master, you entrusted me with two talents. Uh, see, I made a profit and gained two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou has been faithful and trustworthy over a little. I will put you in charge of many things. Share in the joy of your master. So once again, the guy with two doubled it, all right? The one who had received one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew you to be a harsh and demanding man, reaping the harvest where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid. Oh, he's coming with excuses. I was afraid to lose the talent. And I went and hid your talent. Instead of connecting with the one with the two, connecting with the one with the five. Hey, what are you guys doing? Oh, let's see what you're doing. What, how about we collaborate? How about we work together? Let me find out what you're doing. Oh, maybe I need to go to a workshop. Maybe I need to spend a little more time instead of watching TV and uh, being on social media, uh, uh, equipping myself with more skill set, with more understanding of how to do this or how to do that. No, he allowed fear. He allowed fear to rule the day. I was afraid to lose your talent, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. See, you have what is your own. I didn't lose it. I didn't lose it. Yay, I didn't lose it. Now, was the master dude excited about the fact that he didn't lose it? Let's see. But his master answered him, ooh, this is rough. You wicked. Ugh. Lazy servant. 
You knew that I reap the harvest where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter seed. Then you ought to have put my money with the bankers. And at my return, I would have received my money back with interest. So take the talent away from him and give it to the one who has the 10 talents. Take the talent away. Excuses don't get it done. And so one thing that we have to be very mindful of, this is a, this is a parable, but we've got to start, and I don't have time to really start to extract a, a ton of truths tonight. So we'll come back on next week and, and look at some of the truths that we can extract. But I want us to be very aware, I believe, that the God of the universe is watching everything. Not from a place of judgment, not from a place of, you know, ooh, you bad, bad, you're going in time out. But from a place of, can I trust you? So when John has been uh, um, helping out orphanages for the last 10 years, and at some point in those last 10 years, business was booming for John. John had a home business that was valued at just under a billion dollars. But then there were some, some mishaps with that that had nothing to do with John and things happened there. And so he's seen, been on the mountaintop, he's been in the valley, but guess what? His commitment to those orphanages and to those children has remained constant. So look at what the master did here. The master said, okay, there's somebody over here who's not doing what they should be doing with what I've given them to do. So I'm going to bless the one that took the five and made five even more. That's what I mean by we want the God of the universe to breathe on what we're doing. We want the God of the universe to put his hands on what we're doing, to bless what we're doing, okay? For to everyone who has and values his blessings and gifts from God. Now, for those of you that have heard John sharing on the four pillars of faith, what's pillar number one? Gratitude. Gratitude. Great attitude. For everyone uh, who has and values his blessings, gratitude, and gifts from God, and has used them wisely, more will be given and he will richly supply so that he will have an abundance. We're in an abundant series, an abundance, but from the one who does not have, because he has ignored or disregarded his blessings and gifts from God, even what he does have will be taken away. Now that's not because the master wants to be hard that's not because the master, because God wants, uh, uh, you know, was that God that I grew up uh, viewing that, you know, was just waiting for me to mess up. He wants us to be productive. I came, Christ said, that they might have life. And they may have a satisfying life that's rich. That's what he said in one of the versions. A rich and satisfying life. In the Amplified Version, he said, they might enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. Now, let's talk about some practical application real quickly. And then um, we're going to bring John on for an optional um, meditation session. Okay. Practical application. Now, in this parable, there was the discussion of money talent of gold, or, or, or ta it could have been in silver or gold, but it was a talent, okay? We know, uh, looking at um, some more uh, outside information, that that could have been 20 years worth of labor. One talent could have been 20 years worth of labor. So we're talking about the guy who had five had 100 years worth of wages, doubled that, all right? So 200 years worth of wages. Let's call that generational wealth, Okay. Now, I don't know what it is for you, for you from a financial perspective to 
uh, produce far more than what you need to live an enjoyable and a comfortable life. In that uh, uh, parable, the dude with the five, a hundred years worth of wages, one talent was 20 years. So the dude with five had a hundred years worth of wages. The dude with two had 40 years worth of wages. They both doubled. So one went from 100 to 200 years worth of wages. One went from 40 to 80 years worth of wages. The point is, that's abundance. That's more than enough to take care of you, me, we, and now for us to be able to bless the lives of others. We want to be abundant, whether it's in relationships, in health, in our finances, till it overflows, to the full for ourselves, for our families, until it overflows. Now, here's my question to you. What is it that you are doing so that you can have that type of abundant life from a financial perspective? What is it that you're doing so that you can have that type of financial uh, life from a uh, uh, from that type of abundant life from a financial perspective? Now, I'm not saying it's got to be billion dollar church. Billion dollar church obviously has a donation plan like any other faith based organization. We uh, uh, rely on uh, free will donations. Some people call them offerings. Some people call them tithes, whatever you want to call it, okay? We depend financially on uh, free will donations. The difference is 80%. 80% of those donations immediately uh, are directed to a church member. Very often, it may be the person that invited you to Billion Dollar Church, or it may be somebody that invited them to Billion Dollar Church. We want to help our church members raise immense amounts of capital. Immense amount of capital. What we're praying for is that people come to these types of seminars, that they have uh, the right heart, a heart to give, a heart to want to bless others, you won't hear us talk a lot about bling bling. You may never hear us talk about bling bling. Okay. Um, sure. Do we want you to live in a nice house and drive a nice vehicle and, you know, travel? Sure. Okay. Uh, but prayerfully, you have a vision that extends beyond the bling bling stuff. I can tell you that um, just last week, uh, was it last week? Or maybe it was week uh, the 20th, uh, wh whatever day. No, it was last Sunday. Last Sunday uh, was the fourth year that um, my wife, Karen Silver, transitioned. She was uh, sick for six years prior to that. Now, prior to that, prior to her getting sick, we had done very well in the business, uh, um, uh, home business arena. Um, we, uh, you know, had over seven figures in the home business arena, you know, right, in cash. And why was that so important? Because I didn't know she was going to get sick for six years. I didn't know that I wasn't going to be able to really get anything going business wise while she was sick. And because we had some financial resources, I was able to devote that time and energy to being my wife's primary caregiver. She didn't have one doctor's appointment that her husband wasn't there for. So when she did pass on, I wasn't the one at the funeral saying, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, out of guilt, because I knew I did the best that I could. I was there for her uh, presently, emotionally, and what have you. But what allowed me to be able to do that was the fact that before that happened, we had done very well in business, and I had some financial backing, okay? When you hear us talk about you raising capital in uh, uh, through the Billion Dollar Church vehicle, if that's a vehicle you choose to use, it's, again, not going to be for the bling bling. And so whether it's the Billion Dollar Church donation di distribution plan that you say, you know what, I, I, I'm going to be like the five. I'm going to be like the one with the two. I'm going to go and trade with the same. And, you know, I'm going to start inviting people to get this, uh, hear this messaging. Uh, and then prayerfully, some of those folks, no, I believe, I'm, I'm, I'm stating that some of those people is going to resonate with them. They're going to come, uh, they're going to donate. And then a portion of those donations, 80% of the donations, they're going to you, the church members. Now, if it's not our model, find something. 
whether it's trading in cryptocurrency, whatever it is, you know, and your meditation that we're about to do. Maybe that's what you're thinking about. You know, ask the God of the universe, what is it for you? But let's not be like the one who said, I'm afraid. I'm afraid someone may not take me up on an invitation to check out Billion Dollar Church. I'm afraid of what they might say. I'm afraid uh, 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 that I might lose some money, so I'm not going to learn about trading in this market or that market or what have you. That didn't work out too good for that guy. All right. So uh, with that being said, I am at the uh, end of my time for uh, sharing. I want to give it back over to uh, John. John, let me uh, make sure. That you can come on. We're going to do a, this is optional, but we're going to do, Alicia, a guided meditation. John's going to walk us through this. Bear with me. Can you give me screen share? You should have it. Ah, I see your screen. John, we don't hear you. There we go. Are we supposed to be hearing you? Now become aware of the energy of the earth rising up through the base of your spine. Feel the calm and healing frequencies coming from the earth and flowing throughout your body. Now shift your awareness to a place behind your eyes and between your temples. This is where your conscious mind resides. Relax for a moment and feel that now. Now move your attention a little farther back and a little higher up. This is where your creative brain resides. And by mentally going there as you begin your meditation, it will help you elevate your emotions and leave your worries behind. Now mentally look out into your future and imagine a path in front of you. This is the path to your ideal future and each day when you awake, you can choose to move toward your ideal future or procrastinate for another day. But today you have decided to move forward because the more time passes, the more valuable it becomes. And you don't want to waste another moment of the time you have left. Now observe the tools and the talents that God has given you to ensure your successful journey. After close observation, you will realize that God in his infinite wisdom gave you exactly what you need to fulfill your purpose in life and to overcome every obst obstacle in front of you. 
remember, each challenge you face is an opportunity to exercise faith and will cause your faith to grow stronger. Don't worry about tomorrow because God will give you sufficient for today. Daily meditation is one of your most important tools and each day you miss doing it, you are stepping backward instead of forward toward your destination. And doing it two or three times a day is even better. Take time each day to get some sunshine and exercise and spend time with your loved ones because your journey is as much a blessing as the destination will be. And if you currently have no one to share your journey with, you will always have family here that loves and cares for you. And when you grow tired, take time to rest and never forget that all things work for good to those who love the Lord. Now take another deep breath and as you exhale, Allow any remaining stress and pain to leave with your breath. Breathe deeply, and as you exhale, feel the stress leaving your head and upper parts of your body. Notice how your neck is loosening up and moving more freely. Now feel your shoulders and back relax as the stress and pain begins to go away. Now relax your chest and stomach. Notice that any remaining discomfort is leaving those areas. Now focus on your hips and thighs and moving down your legs to your calves and ankles and finally to your feet. You may notice a warm tingling feeling or sensation from circulation. Now take a deep breath and as you exhale, Allow any remaining pain to evaporate and disappear. Take another deep breath and as you exhale, let all of your blood vessels relax so that your circulation increases. Relax your veins and arteries and capillaries, allowing nutrition and oxygen to reach all of the extremities of your body. Imagine being enveloped in a huge ball of light. What you are seeing are photons of light, and they are dancing around just waiting for your command to heal any part of your body that may not be at ease or is suffering from dis-ease. Now mentally direct these tiny angels to that area of your body you are most concerned about and feel an immediate healing begin to take place. Bask in this light as these tiny surgeons perform their miracle. So let it be done, so let it be done, so let it be done. Now say thank you, Lord, that my healing is complete. Everything you experience is created by your heart. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. The simple truth is this, 
The way to obtain anything that you desire is to get your heart to resonate with the frequency of the thing you desire. Now shift your attention to your financial needs. The scripture says, whatever you ask in faith believing, you shall receive. Would God give such a promise if he didn't want you to use it, to have the things you need and desire? What is your desire as it relates to money? Think about your biggest desire. What would it look like if you had it right now? Look at it and see if you can feel a frequency emanating from it. Now mentally surround yourself with that frequency. How would you feel if that desire was granted today? Immerse yourself in that feeling. Notice how that feeling warms your heart and brings thoughts of gratitude to your mind. Feeling is the secret. So as often as you can remember, try to carry that feeling with you. Start when you first wake up in, in the morning and again before you go to sleep. And even try to carry that feeling with you throughout the day. There is another aspect of faith that allows us to access an additional power called unity. The scripture tells us, ask not how you will pay for your food and other expenses, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added. Imagine for a moment how it would feel to never have financial worries ever again. Isn't that a wonderful feeling? If we can, we can all, if we can all have everything we need by asking or seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then what is this kingdom we should seek? The kingdom of God is the unity of mankind, and righteousness is blessing others, not ourselves. At Billion Dollar Church, we are actively seeking the kingdom of God by teaching and encouraging unity among our members, and we invite you to join with us in that endeavor. Imagine being part of a community that helps its members take care of their financial needs. Imagine a world where everyone has plenty of food to eat and a roof over their head. A world without greed and without jealousy. And a world without crime. That is the kingdom of God which can only be accomplished through the unity of mankind. And that is why, when two or more are gathered together in his name, God is there also. And he promises to multiply our faith and our actions when we come together with one heart and one mind. That is where we are going, and we invite you to include our vision in your daily meditation. Add your faith and your prayers to ours as we work to create this community. Because once our numbers grow large enough, nothing can be withheld from us. In a few moments, I'm going to count from three to one. And when I do, you will open your eyes feeling as if you are just waking up from a refreshing nap. Now we start with three. Take a deep breath, feeling refreshed and alert. Two, stretching your body, 
and feeling the ground beneath you. One, opening your eyes, feeling younger, healthier, and more energetic than before. Wow. John, I want I, I wanna I wanna follow you because you're doing the guided meditation. It's that open your eyes part that I have a hard time with. Because I just want to <laughs> stay there. <laughs> oh wow, man, that's amazing. Wow. John, share share with folks that may not be um very familiar, and I know we're at the top of the hour just about may not be familiar with with meditation. I know it's, it's done a lot, practiced a lot in, um, you know, the Eastern part of the world. Um, I know in my Christian upbringing, I heard about meditation, but it wasn't something that was, that, that was done a lot. Can you just share a little bit about why meditation is such a key tool at our disposal um, to actually get the things um, that we desire. Well, as I began looking into the scripture regarding meditation, I found that there's 26 verses regarding meditation. We're actually admonished to meditate. And of course, growing up in you know a Christian home, I was never taught this, never heard anything about it. It was, I don't think, uh, I don't recall ever a scripture about meditation being brought up. And so we're missing a very valuable tool because, you know, feeling is the secret. And, you know, the scripture tells us to meditate on good things. But what are good things? Good things are things that God created, God provided. You know, good and God have the same root. And so, is money a good thing? Well, money is just a tool. It's, it's the hand of the user, the, the hand of the person who has the money that determines whether money is good or evil. What is the money used for? And so, um, yeah, we can focus on money, but what really should we focus on? We should focus on the things that money can do, the people that money can help. You know, I've, uh, you know, if I, if I die penniless, you know, it's really, it's really immaterial. If I can give all of my wealth before I die, you know, I used to think that, uh, I wanted to give a big inheritance to my children, lots of money. But I came to realize that the inheritance that I should give to my children is to be able to provide for themselves, not to just receive a, you know, a, a, a big inheritance of money that would probably be to their detriment, not to their benefit. So really what I want to do is I want to teach my children to be self-sufficient. I want to teach them to be, you know, good, upstanding citizens in their community, in their families, their homes, be good parents, good fathers, good mothers. That's the inheritance I want to leave to them. But really what I want to do with my wealth is to spend the vast majority of it <clears throat> before, you know, before I leave this existence. Um, in fact, I, I really don't plan on leaving this existence. I plan on being here when the millennium is ushered in. And that's part of <clears throat> a big part of my purpose in creating the billion dollar church is to help usher in the millennium because Isaiah chapter one says that Zion will be redeemed with righteousness. <clears throat> and what is righteousness? 
Well, right there in first chapter, it tells us what righteousness is in the whole chapter of, uh, of Isaiah 58 talks about righteousness <clears throat> and talks about uh, judging the widow and the fatherless. Judgment, righteous judgment. That's the kind of judgment. And what, what kind of judgment should we judge them with? They deserve to have food in their belly and a roof over their head. And how are they going to do that on their own? They're not. And it's to, you know, invite the hungry into your home, clothe the naked. <clears throat> we think that we are supposed to fast to afflict our bodies. Uh, and, and the Lord says, that's not the fast that I have ordained, not the fast that I require. The fast that I re require is to impart of your substance to others. So when we think about the scripture and, and, and bringing all of the things together, because they're scattered, all of these important principles are scattered, and we really need to draw them all together. And we understand that if we were all united, the Lord would no longer withhold anything from us. He would give us whatever we desire, whatever we ask. Literally, we would never have financial worries ever again. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, <clears throat> and all these things will be added. <clears throat> and that is our goal. Uh, and by inviting other, other members... Yes, we, we want to teach principles that will help you transform your lives spiritually. But also, we want to help transform your financial lives. And by being a missionary and inviting others to Billion Dollar Church, you can literally share in the donations that come in. Because the church pays 80% of its donations back to its members. And so, basically, you get paid to be a missionary. You get paid to be a missionary. <laughs> and what's wrong with that? The, the Bible says the laborer is worthy of his hire. The laborer needs to eat as well, <clears throat> right? We, we provided a platform where literally this could be the only labor that you perform. You could literally give your life to going out and being a missionary for Billion Dollar Church and have all of your financial needs taken care of. Never have to worry about money ever again. It's there. It's available to anyone who wants to thrust in their sickle and be a part of the work. You know, the, the harvest is ready. The laborers are few. But the laborers will become a mighty force and we will take this message around the globe <clears throat> to every corner of the, the earth and many lives are going to be touched not only spiritually but financially and we're not just spiritual beings we're not just mental beings we're not just physical beings <clears throat> and when when our spirits are low when our mental energies are low and discouraged, our body suffers. And when our body is hungry, our spirit suffers. When our body is naked, when our body has to endure the elements out in the cold, our spirits suffer, our, our emotions suffer. So we can't really separate our you know, our spirits, our, our emotions, our mind, our bodies, to have a complete and whole experience, you know, to become all that we, we can experience in life, we have to have a healthy body, we have to have healthy emotions, we have to have a healthy spirit. And that's our goal 
here at Billion Dollar Church is to help transform all of these things. And getting back to meditation, meditation helps us do that. You know, you spoke of what happens to us physically. They've proven scientifically that if you will meditate for 15 minutes, change your emotions for 15 minutes, three times a day, that your immune system will be 50% stronger inside of a week. Well, what does a stronger immune system do to the rest of your body, mm -hmm. to your overall health? Mm -hmm. It can take away things like cancer. Immune system can fight cancer. It can fight COVID. It can fight virtually, you know, anything mm -hmm. that you're beset with. So let's, you know, let's take this, these things to heart. Let's practice our meditation, exercise our faith every single day, more than once a day, two or three times a day. And you will see your life begin to transform in front of you. You will look different. You will feel different. You will walk different. And people will notice. Amen you to that. Be, you'll be blessed physically. Your health will improve. You know, many, many blessings that you have. <clears throat> Literally, whatsoever you ask in faith, believing, you shall receive. And faith is an exercise. It's something, you know, if you forget it, you, you grow weak. If you ignore your physical body, it grows weak. So anyway, back to you, Professor. Family, um, this has been our Sunday night sharing. If you are visiting with us, I see a lot of names that I'm not as familiar with. And so if you're already uh, a part with us at Billion Dollar Church, uh, welcome. And for those of you that are checking us out, um, what do you do now? Get back to the person that invited you to uh, um, be a part with us here tonight. Ask them for an invitation link. Um, you'll go on and you'll get registered. Now, they may send you one of two links. It may say billiondollarchurch.io, or it may say billiondollarmind.io. Before Billion Dollar Church, uh, we were Billion Dollar Mind, um, but we're bringing Billion Dollar Mind under the auspices a billion dollar church. So um, that link's going to take you, either one of those is going to take you to the same place. You simply register uh, for free and, and you can come inside a billion dollar church, billion dollar mind.io. Now, um, if you want to find out more about the donation distribution uh, plan, there's a couple ways for you to do that. Uh, number one, when um, you register for Billion Dollar Mind or BillionDollarChurch.io, you should receive an email. So check your email. You want to check your spam. Uh, it may come from, J John, does that come from Billion Dollar Church or Billion Dollar Mind? BDM? It may say BDM or BDC. Do you know? I believe it comes from Billion, billion Dollar Mind. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so, so if you see uh, an email from BDM, Bill, Billion Dollar Mind. Again, that was um, before we brought, started bringing thing into the auspices of a Billion Dollar Church. Uh, that's still us, okay? So you get a, um, a welcome email, and it's going to give you a few links there. It's going to give you a link to um, um, a couple of Telegram rooms. Um, for those of you that use Telegram, it's going to give you a link. I believe it gives you a link to uh, a portal, uh, which is a free portal. Uh, inside that portal, we have all the content on our um, distribution plan. All right. So what happens? Someone uh, chooses to donate $10. $8 of that immediately gets distributed to uh, one of our church members. Usually it's going to be the person that either invited you or someone that invited them. Uh, likewise, you can do the same. If you invite someone and they do a $10 donation, $50 donation, $1,000 donation, $20,000 donation, that's right. Someone does a $20,000 donation, $16,000 is getting uh, um, distributed to a church member. Um, you know, we've seen where some, certainly not all, some folks in the faith movement have manipulated folks when it comes to giving when it comes to money. Um, I, 
I'm not going to mention the person's name. I don't understand why a televangelist needs five fleets of jets. I don't get that. Um, and so one of the things that, that John is insistent upon is that we help the people. So we're not going to be like, again, not going to name the church, not going to be like one church that they say is worth over $100 billion. No, if $100 billion comes through Billion Dollar Church, $80 billion is going to you guys and Guyettes. Okay. All right. So get back to the person uh, that uh, shared this with you. If you are a guest with us, uh, do be mindful that on uh, we have three Zooms a week uh, right now. There are Sunday night. Uh, much of what you've uh, seen tonight, the content changes, um, but we're going into the scriptures to uh, extract uh, uh, principles. Tuesday night, John normally needs uh, Tuesday night uh, with a sharing, and then uh, he's Batman on, on Tuesday nights, and I'm Robin. <laughs> uh, and then on Thursday nights, uh, we do a deep dive into the donation plan. And then in time, there'll be other folks that will uh, be leading uh, uh, various sharings as it relates uh, to Billion Dollar Church, whether it's the donation plan or whether it's the actual principles that we share. All right, so get back and do that. And uh, let's end with a very quick uh, prayer of covering and safety for everyone. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for everyone that came on tonight's uh, Zoom that took time out of their busy schedule to avail themselves. Uh, Father, we pray that you will protect them Keep us all safe. We pray, Father, that this would be a week that we don't experience any um, tragic phone calls or text messages or emails. Uh, keep our children safe. Uh, those that have grandchildren, great-grandchildren, perhaps, keep them all safe. Keep our children safe in the schools. Um, let there be an army of angels encamped around about the schools. Keep the students and the faculty and the teachers on the highways uh, Father, yesterday I was coming back from the funeral and um, two people were, were were racing and almost saw a horrible accident right there in front of my face. But Father, you, uh, you moved that other car out of the way just in the nick of time, just in time, Father. And so, Father, I pray that you would protect us in our coming and our going. And our coming and our go going. Father, we love you. We adore you. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, have a phenomenal week. We love each and every one of you. I don't see any questions, and my daughter is calling me, telling me to come and pick her up. So with that being said, we love each and every one of you. Let's transform this world together, starting with yours. Good night, everyone. Good night. God bless.